Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me in the first video of this year, of 2019. So before we start, I want to wish you a very happy and healthy new year with hopefully lots of creativity as well. So um, I'm planning to upload lots of tutorials on my channel this year and we're starting off with the first one and this is a tutorial on how to draw black curly fur in colored pencil. So this was part of a tutorial I did on Patreon. So the real time version of this one and the two curly furs you see above are available on Patreon for the $4 tier. And let's get started now. So I am using my Polychromos colored pencil as always and a white Caran d'Ache luminance to blend. And besides that, I'm using a very simple regular pencil sharpener. I'm using my Tombow Mono Zero eraser. And then I'm also using a Olfa cutter knife um, later on in the video to do some special detailing. And for paper, I use the Canson 1557 180 grams paper. So I drew this a circle as you can see. And within that circle, I'm going to draw the curly fur sample that you see on the right. I'm going to make it a little less uh, dark. So I'll keep the contrast a little bit lower as um, it is really dark in the reference photo. So I wanted to put some more detail in, make it a little bit lighter. I am starting out by mapping out the, all the different clumps of fur that you can see. So I'm sketching those out and get an overview of the shapes. I'm following the reference photo, see in which direction all these clumps grow. And that is my first layer. And that is what I always do when drawing curly fur. Curly fur. I map out the direction of the fur, draw in all those different clumps. For that I'm using a medium toned cool gray. And when I have everything mapped out, I'm going in with a darker cool gray. This is cool gray 4, if I'm not mistaken, cool gray 4 or 5. And with that, I am going to darken up some of these clumps. So I'm focusing on the shadows first. So I'm drawing in the darkest shadows. But this is still my first layer, so... I'm not going to put in those dark blacks. I'm focusing first on mapping out the shadows by pressing lightly. I'm looking at the reference photo, trying to see in which direction all those clumps go. And I'm slowly darkening up the areas in between the curls. This sample is part of a poodle, by the way. This is um, the head of a black poodle, so a part of the head that I picked. So I continue to carefully map out the shadows that I see using light pressure. And by using light pressure I'm, I'm still able to add more layers on top later. This part is always a little bit of work, it takes quite long, but it's a very important step in the process. So 
so you can see this this pattern that is starting to be a little bit more clear I'm not copying the reference photo 100% but I'm trying to be close the most important thing is to get the texture right and to get the right colors in now it's time to add a base tone on the whole area so first I'm taking a warm gray so in the sample in the reference I can see a clear cool or warm tone so I've decided to mix the two to use both warm tones and cool tones to create a nice balance and this is warm gray too and I'm putting down a light base layer on the curls, also on the more highlighted parts and making sure to always draw in the right direction so now to um, compensate for that warm tone, I'm using a cool tone again this is cool grey 3 going on top of that and creating more um, individual hairs So I'm drawing strokes, I'm drawing strokes all the time, so I'm not coloring in a solid area. I am drawing tiny strokes following the direction of the clumps of fur. Now it's time to add some color. I don't want to use only grays and black because that's going to look very flat so I'm going to use some brown and this is walnut brown I see a bit of a brown tone here and there on the reference so I decided to put that in um, mostly, mostly on the shadow areas the areas in between the curls I don't add a lot of brown though, just a little bit to create some more depth. Now it's time to add some black. I want to add the darkest tones now. So with the black polychromos and um, a sharpened pencil, I'm now going to create the darkest areas, pushing a bit harder now, and create some good contrast in there. In order to make the fur look shiny, there has to be enough contrast. So the difference between the very dark shadows and the bright highlighted hairs is going to, to create the shiny shiny effect still making sure to always draw in the right direction even when putting in these very dark shadows very important to use a lot of layers when working in color pencil work from light to dark especially with black fur because it would be so easy to just go in with black right away but um, even with black fur the layers need to be built up carefully you can always see different colors in black fur so definitely be patient 
I'm using some Payne's Grey now. Payne's Grey is a dark grey with a bluish tone to it. So a very cool tone. With that I'm going to darken up the medium tones. So you can see now that the contrast is a bit, little bit too high. The difference between the dark shadows and the rest is too big. So now I'm darkening up the medium tones. So let me know in the comments below what your new year's resolutions are. And especially when it comes to art. I'd love to see them in the comments. Maybe we can encourage each other, each other to stick to them. Alright, I'm adding a bit more brown now. And this is burnt, um, burnt Umber. And then even a bit of, of purple. This is Caput Morton Violet. It's a color that I love using in black fur. Because it always gives it so much more depth. Now to get rid of the paper texture. I'm going to do some burnishing with the white Caran d'Ache pencil. That's the technique I always use. So I, uh, I just go over everything. But I, uh, I go around the darkest shadows though. So by adding the white pencil on top, you lighten up the layers. But you also push the colors into the paper. Which means that the paper will get saturated quite a bit. So I will be able to go on top with some other colors, but not too much anymore. So I don't want to darken up, to lighten up the darkest areas with that white pencil. So now I'm going in with the black Caran d'Ache. And this one is a little bit more black and more opaque than the black Polychromos. And with that I'm going to enhance the dark shadows once more. So on a reference you can see a lot of dark spots. I'm trying to recreate, recreate those, but I'm keeping them a little bit lighter. So now with the Olfa cutter, I am going to create some sticking out highlighted hairs, some flyaway hairs. And by just lightly scratching the paper with the Olfa cutter, you can pull out some very fine line. Don't damage the paper though. You can very easily damage the paper with that. So I don't overdo it. I pull out some hairs and then I go back in again with the polychromos to um, put in some final colors. All the materials are also listed in the description. So if you're interested in all the materials, have a look there. I'll link them to Amazon where you can find them. And I'll also be pulling out some highlights with my eraser. So with the Tombow Mono Zero eraser, I use that mainly for pulling out highlights for erasing details. It has a very fine tip to it, so it's very good for doing some detailed erasing. So now it's starting to get really dense, really good dense piece of fur. I'm going back in finally with the black Caran d'Ache once again. I feel like the shadows could be darkened up a little bit more. And then I do some final detailing with brown. And then 
this sample is finished. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in the real-time versions of these videos, um, have a look at my Patreon. They are available for $4. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.